Hi everyone, Anjit on the side. Welcome back to AV Automation Hub. In the last video, we talked about what are APIs. So basically, APIs are like digital waiters that connect your app to a server. But not all the APIs are seen. Some are like open parks, some are locked like private offices, and some are invite-only clubs. So for example, when you book an Uber, there are five different APIs which are called advanced. For example, like Google Map finds your location, the pricing engine calculates your fare, the payment system charges your card, and notification pings the nearest driver. But here's the important thing. Some of these APIs anyone can access, and some only Uber can touch, while some are only for Uber's business partners. So the question is, how many total APIs are there? In today's video, we are going to learn about four types of APIs which are based on who can actually use them. So there are four types of APIs by access. We have public API, there is private API, there is partner API, and there is composite API. Now let's understand each of the API type one by one. So the first one is public API, which is also known as open API. So these are the APIs which are available to every developer. Even though public API and open API, they seem similar, but the purpose of API is slightly different here. With open API, publishers provide the solution freely with complete access to the architecture. Whereas with the public API, they usually have more restrictions in terms of access to the structure, in terms of security, and in terms of management of their software. So just think of public API like a library. So anyone can walk in, get a library card, and borrow books. So that's exactly how public API work. Now let's look at some real public APIs in the market. So we have Google Map API, which is used by companies like Uber, Airbnb, and many other companies. Google Map API is probably the most famous public API right now because it is used by most of the platforms, even for the delivery service for application like Uber, for application like Airbnb. This is one of the example of Google Map API. It is used by more than 5 million developers today. The next one is Open Weather Map. So this API basically offers current weather forecast, historic data, all through a simple API. And thousands of weather apps rely on this one public API. Next one is GitHub API. Using GitHub API, you can manage repositories, you can have user and organization management access, you can have code and content interaction. Next one is YouTube API. It is again a public API. All right. So what is the main benefit of public API? These are publicly documented and they are available for use by any developer. So now public APIs are all about openness and growth. But what if you're building something internal and you don't want the world to see that? So that's where private APIs come into the picture. So the next type is private API. So private APIs are the complete opposite of public API. They are only used within a company. No external developer can access them. It is also called as internal APIs because these APIs are used by in-house developers to achieve the company goals. In case of private APIs, the source code cannot be accessed by third-party developers. Almost every company that uses internal software, they build internal API for their enterprise products. Let's see some real-time examples of private APIs. So private APIs, one of the famous examples is Netflix. So Netflix runs on hundreds of microservices, small specialized programs that each do one thing. The recommendation engine, the video player, the user profile system, the billing system, they all talk to each other via private APIs. The next example is Amazon internal API. So Amazon probably has the most complex private API ecosystem in the world. Their warehouse system talks to inventory tracking, which talks to shopping logistics, which further talks to customer notification. So when you order something, there are dozens of private APIs which are coordinating. Basically checking the stock, reserving your item, routing to the nearest warehouse, and scheduling the delivery. So this is all internal API which are getting used here. The next one is Google internal services. So Google search does not work alone. When you search something on google.com, it might call Google ads for sponsored results, Google maps for location data, YouTube for 
video results, all of these services, basically, they talk through private APIs. And similarly, it's the case with the Uber backend system. There are a lot of internal APIs which are used over here. So public APIs are open to everyone, whereas private APIs are locked to internal teams. But what if you want something in between? So what if you want to give access to some companies, but not everyone? So that's where third API type come into the picture. So that is called partner API. So partner API, it sits right in the middle. They are not fully public and they are not fully private either. So this is a form of open API, but with one exception. The access of the API is granted under certain conditions defined by the publisher. So just think of it like an exclusive club. You can't just walk in. You need to be invited. You need to have sign agreements. You need to meet requirements and then you will get approved. So why this is used? Because these kind of APIs are used to monetize your product. Now let's see some real-time example of partner APIs. One of the biggest example is Salesforce. So Salesforce has a huge partner ecosystem. So companies that build integration with the Salesforce. But to access the deeper integration features, you need to be a certified Salesforce partner. So these partner APIs, they let you access the customer data, create custom apps, and deeply integrate with the Salesforce platform. But you can't just sign up. You need approval, you need certification, and you need a partnership agreement. So that's why this is an example of partner API. Next one is Amazon Seller API. So if you sell products on Amazon, you get access to the seller API. But you can't get this API unless you are a registered Amazon seller. So this API lets sellers manage their inventory, track orders, update product listing, and handle the returns. It is powerful, but it's restricted to verified business partners only, which are sellers themselves. Apple Business Manager API. Apple has partner APIs for the enterprise customers. If your company buys 100 of iPhones for employees, you will get access to APIs that let you remotely manage those devices, install applications, enforce security policies, and track devices. But Apple does not give this to individuals. You need an enterprise agreement for this. You are a business partner, but not just a customer. Other example is Uber driver A. So, all right, so we have seen what is public API, what is private API, and what are partner APIs. But there's one more type that is a bit different. It's about who can access and it's about combining multiple APIs into one. And that's called composite API. So composite API, basically, they can make requests to different endpoints in a single call. The approach is very simple. It is meant to boost the performance and speed up the execution process. Why this approach matter? Because of the performance. Every time when an API makes a call, there's a network latency, there's processing time. And if you need to call five APIs, that's basically five round trips. So with composite API, you just make one call and get everything back at once. So composite APIs are basically built on top of other APIs. They are like a wrapper that bundles multiple operations together. So for example, Uber ride system. So what happened? When you tap request ride in Uber, so one API call triggers all of this behind the scene. For example, it will get you the current location from the Google Map API. It will find the nearby drivers using the Uber driver API. It will calculate the fare for you using the pricing API. It will authorize the payment method, which is basically the payment API. It will send notification to the driver, which is using the notification API, and it will create a write record. So all of them from one button press and that's called composite api orchestrating multiple services now here is a quick comparison so public api these are basically accessed by anyone but there are api keys there are some limitations here then we have private api which are only used by the private teams then we have partner api which are basically used by the approved partners only then we have composite api it varies so these are some of the real-time examples which we have already discussed so public API like Google Map, GitHub, YouTube. Then we have private API, which are Netflix and Amazon. Then we have partner API like Apple and Salesforce. And we have composite API like Uber or Expedia. So yeah, that's all for today's video in which we learned about different type of API by the access type. So most of the engineers, 
they do not know the api by the access time or availability so this is very important topic in the next video we are going to cover the type of api by the architecture design if you like the video please like share and subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends who are planning to learn the concept from the scratch this is day 2 of our ongoing series and we'll be uploading more such videos in the upcoming days thank you once again for watching ab automation hub and i'll see you in the next video